Right, you guys ready? Good evening, everybody. Before we begin, I'd like to welcome Pastor Jason Howard from Stone Creek Church to lead us in an invocation. Thank you, Mayor. If we would bow our heads, please, for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for how you gifted each of these men and women who guide our city. We ask tonight for your guidance and blessing over this governing council who continues the work of helping our city grow and thrive. And in times when we see so much violence and uncertainty in our news, we pray for the leaders, along with our city's police, fire, EMS, and services, to bring peace, connection, and a true sense of community to Milton. And we ask for your guidance and your wisdom as these men and women live out their elected duties and serve in the best way they know how. And we pray for tonight's agenda and for your assurance of what is right, fair, and just for all who live and work in and around Milton, the best city in Georgia. Father, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for being here. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, October 3rd, 2016 to order. City, if you'll please call the roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the October 3rd, 2016 regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment, either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards are received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers, please identify yourself by name, address, and organization if applicable. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of an organized group or association, provided that the individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of the organization on a form provided by the city clerk. Demonstration of any sort during the meeting is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, booing, cheering, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Councilmember Karen Thurman. Here. Councilmember Matt Coons. Here. Councilmember Bill Luss. Here. Councilmember Burt Hewitt. Here. Councilmember Joe Longoria. Here. Councilmember Rick Morick is absent for the record. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Again, good evening. I want to welcome everybody here to our uh, City of Milton and our council meeting tonight. So, City, will you please call the next item on our agenda? Our next agenda item is approval of the meeting agenda. This is agenda item number 16 to 18. I would, uh, I'd like to add a, an executive session to discuss property acquisition. And also, staff would like to take the remove a new business item number 16 225, the consideration of a resolution to create the Milton Public Art Committee. And this item will come before us on the bring it back on the 17th. Is there anything else, for staff or council, on the agenda? Okay, I'll look for, up for a motion. Mayor, I move that we approve the meeting agenda with the addition of an executive session and the removal of item. Agenda item number 16-225. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Councilmember Longoria, second from <coughs> Councilmember Kuntz. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any discussion? Hearing none. I'm sorry. I didn't mean any discussion. I'm not any dissension. Um, do we have any public comment tonight? We do not, sir. Okay. I'll move on to the general to the uh, consent agenda. Sudi, if you'll please call that item. First item under consent agenda is approval of the June 20th, 2016 regular city council meeting minutes, agenda item number 16219. Next is approval of a change order to the construction services agreement between the city of Milton and Ed Castro Landscape Inc. 
for landscape maintenance services, agenda item number 16220, our third and final consent agenda item this evening is approval of an agreement between the City of Milton and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey for transfer of ownership of an artifact from the former World Trade Center. Agenda item number 16221. Mayor, I'll move to approve the consent agenda as prepared by staff. Second. I have a motion for approval from Councilmember Law, second Councilmember Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, see if we can move on to reports and presentations, if you'll call the first presentation. First presentation is by the North Fulton Chamber Economic Development Department. Ms. Sarah Ladar. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you guys know, we have had an agreement for services from the North Fulton Chamber for many years now. It was Progress Partners. They've now moved back just under as a department under the chamber. But again, we will be contributing a large portion of our economic development budget to them. So I asked uh, Bethany Usri, the Vice President of Economic Development for the Chamber to come and talk to you guys about what they did last year and what they look forward to doing in 2017. Thank you for having me this evening. I think a number of you should have a printed out copy in front of you, uh, as well as on your screens. As Sarah mentioned, I'm Bethany Ustry, Vice President of Economic Development, Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce. Uh, quickly, just want to run through uh, some of the items uh, that we have done with you all uh, in the past, and some of the things that were outlined uh, that your current year contribution would be going towards. Uh, just a couple of highlights under the advertising and marketing budget. Uh, the Atlanta Business Chronicle uh, annual North Fulton Market Report. Uh, just as a reminder, that does go to about 86,000 readers uh, in Atlanta, and uh, that includes about 29,000 paid subscribers. Uh, another uh, item under advertising and marketing is the Atlanta Regional Commission uh, Regional Marketing Group. Uh, the 2016 event was actually held on September 15th. You see a picture there on the slide. Uh, if you look on the uh, Far left, you can see uh, behind Al Nash's head, uh, Olivia Ibrahim, who's on my staff, a project manager that's also in the audience. There were about 100 attendees at that particular event uh, that was uh, targeted towards uh, commercial real estate brokers. Um, and the next event will be held in the fall of 2017. Uh, you also see a reference to CoStar, which is an online database of available commercial property. Uh, again, you all have access to that uh, at any time that you need. Uh, Sarah reaches out to her to us um, at her convenience whenever she needs uh, data that we can provide from that database. Um, we're always happy to provide that uh, whatever she needs. Uh, also, you'll see Georgia Trend uh, Annual Business Georgia issue uh, that is set to come out in October of 2016. Uh, that's a 30,000 uh, person circulation that goes to site selectors, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, chambers, uh, industrial development authorities, and the content is also included on um, the Georgia Trend website. Uh, another investment is the Innovation Crescent Regional Partnership. Uh, we are able to hold a board seat representing North Fulton uh, with that entity, and uh, that uh, gives us access to a couple of the trade shows that I'll discuss momentarily. Uh, as you can see, conferences and meetings. Uh, again, the Atlanta Regional Commission State of the Region uh, breakfast. It's set to be held on October 28th of this year, and we also participated in that last year. Um, and Sarah will be joining us for that event uh, sitting at the uh, North Fulton table. Uh, you also see both HIMS and BIO, which are shows that we're able to participate in uh, through the Innovation Crescent Regional Partnership. Uh, the Georgia Department of Economic Development does have a booth at each of those shows, and the Innovation Crescent uh, has a portion of that booth um, where uh, companies that we help recruit um, can be uh, featured. Uh, the show for HIMSS, February 2017 in Orlando, 
And then uh, also you see bio is June 2017 in San Diego. There's also a reception that's a part of each of those shows. Uh, at the bio convention, it's actually outside of the convention uh, at a venue that's conveniently located uh, across the street. And then at the HIMS show, and it's actually an in-booth reception that's in uh, combination with the Georgia HIMS chapter. Uh, I am actually um, operating as the co-lead uh, for uh, the planning for the HIMSS conference uh, through the Innovation Crescent. So I'm working with Cornelius Bankston with the Metro Atlanta Chamber um, in that capacity. I have actually uh, made uh, a request to a company uh, that's currently a home-based uh, business that is in Milton about their um, uh, potential participation in our booth. And um, their company is currently going through a merger, so I'm waiting on final um, information on whether she'll be able to participate or not, but I have recently uh, made that request. And then lastly, you'll see uh, the State of the County uh, also <coughs> to be held in April 2017. Again, that was something we did last year as well. Um, and again, a table purchase and uh, gives you guys a seat at the table. And then moving on to events, I think a number of you uh, were able to attend our North Fulton Opportunity Outlook. Uh, this year was our second annual. And um, just to give you some historical perspective, in 2015, we had about 116 attendees, and it was in the city of Alpharetta. 2016, we had about 155 attendees, and it was this in the city of Roswell. Um, so as you can see, the attendance is growing each year. So we anticipate the third annual to be in fall of 2017. And certainly, uh, we'll plan to rotate around the city. So we're hopeful that Milton will be in the rotation soon. Um, and then uh, lastly, I put up the Georgia Power logo uh, to represent a broker's event uh, that we're discussing doing with them. And that's slated for um, early 2017. Uh, we don't have uh, necessarily all the details fleshed out on that, but that's something um, that the group of economic development professionals, Sarah and the other cities, uh, suggested that they would um, like for us to uh, spearhead and participate in. So hopefully that gives you all a sampling uh, of what your investment has historically uh, gone to and then also what it will, would potentially be going to uh, in fiscal year 2017. Certainly appreciate your consideration as always, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Bethany. Is there any questions? Council? Bill? Yeah, Beth, thanks for coming over. Uh, and thanks for your report. Uh, what, uh, what uh, has the city of Milton uh, received as a result of uh, this economic development effort in the past year? Perhaps you could report on that. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, I would say uh, a couple of things, just looking through um, some of the specifics uh, with the advertising marketing bucket. Of course, there was uh, some coverage uh, in the Atlanta Business Chronicle, the North Fulton Market Report. Uh, Milton had some mention in there. Um, also, as I mentioned, uh, Sarah does have access to CoStar and has had that for a number of um, years. And then also for Georgia Trend, um, both in 2015 and the upcoming issue in 2016, uh, you all uh, did have a presence in the advertising for that. And then um, specifically looking at uh, any of the shows, um, again, I think we've talked about this for a number of years. Sometimes it's a long uh, life cycle um, to actually seeing uh, projects. I do know that uh, there were a couple of um, projects that we reached out to Sarah on um, to uh, specific ones that were looking for locations. And so we've definitely had some activity um, that's been a result of trying to find specific locations uh, for some companies. And then also uh, for the North Fulton Opportunity Outlook, um, your city manager uh, was able to give a five minute update uh, to the audience that was there. And um, also uh, Sarah was on the planning committee uh, for that event, um, helping us drive the content and everything of that as well. Have we turned over any of these opportunities out there? Have we actually seen any new businesses come to uh, Milton as a result of all of these? Uh, uh, um, I know that there have been a number of new things going on in Milton. Uh, I can't necessarily maybe point to one of these specific things, but I can uh, think of some specific uh, meetings uh, that Sarah and I have both been invited to as far as uh, some existing businesses that are looking to grow and expand in Milton and some of those uh,
conversations that we've been included in have resulted certainly uh, from some of these various things that we're able to participate in um, as a result of your investment. So um, again, you know, sometimes it's a long life cycle um, and we don't necessarily, uh, you know, have something specific uh, to share with you each and every year as far as a new large uh, landed project. But um, hopefully uh, we're continuing to refine everything that we're doing and making sure that we're um, using your investment as wisely as possible to do just that and attract people specifically to, um, I know the Deerfield and Crabapple areas, your two areas that you're uh, highly focused on as far as recruiting new business to those areas. Karen? I know at one time not all of the cities, six cities in North Fulton participated at the same level. What is the situation now? Are we all participating at the same level or are we? You all have the opportunity now to present to participate at different levels uh, based on um, your interest. Um, I provided Sarah with um, a document that was basically what we call the sponsorship uh, menu and there were different areas that she expressed that you all might be interested in participating in. We gave the exact same document uh, to all of the cities, uh, minus Mountain Park because they generally don't participate um, from a financial standpoint. And I can say up until this point, um, each of the cities has participated at least in some capacity. Um, they're not currently equal, but we're doing it a little bit differently instead of coming uh, necessarily for just a large sum and having just an overarching agreement. Um, we gave the cities a menu of options and let them choose what they were interested in and they will only be included in those things that they selected. Is that something we can get a copy of? It is something that we took advantage of already, um, but yes, without a doubt. Okay. I mean, I'd just like to know. In the past, I think we've kind of felt like you know, we paid them the big fee, but other cities were getting the same services we were getting and they weren't paying the same fee. So I just would like to know. And I will say overall, uh, the sponsorship request in general was uh, less than it has been in previous years. Um, I know normally we've come and asked you guys for about a $25,000 investment uh, to cover the entire fiscal year. I believe the total that we're looking at uh, for this particular uh, year is right around eleven thousand um, dollars. So we went to everybody with significantly less and kind of refined our offerings um, just to make sure um, that it was more uh, feasible for everyone's budget to participate. And there are similar contributions uh, for the North North Fulton cities, uh, and I can get you all that information from Sarah. Okay. And, and Beth, to, to Bill's point, um, and I know sometimes it's hard to quantify it, but. I would have to say, would, wouldn't you agree that there are tangible benefits to the city, even with everything that you guys are doing for the North Fulton area, um, you know, as businesses come and whether they land in, in Alpharetta or Roswell or, or even Milton, we, we get some of the, the positive effects from that versus not only, you know, tax dollars from sales tax and things people spend, but also residential and a, you, know, Certainly. you guys may help bring a company well, and in. I, yeah, and I can't speak to that in particular. Um, I'm not sure if I was able to report on this last year or not, but I did travel up to the Mercedes headquarters um, during that project specifically for the purpose of helping um, existing employees think about relocating to the North Fulton area. And um, as you can imagine, uh, Milton was attractive to a number of them. And certainly I know of at least one uh, in particular that did relocate to the city of Milton. Um, so uh, that maybe would be a tangible benefit uh, that I could point to. And certainly when you have companies like a Pfizer who landed just across the street in Alpharetta, and as you mentioned, now they're in the footprint and their employees are uh, taking advantage of um, certainly uh, dining in some of the Milton restaurants and things like that. So I appreciate you. Uh, inserting that comment. Anything else? I always have to, uh, I think back about 10 years ago and we had a business that was renewing their license and they named, they were called Alpharetta and said, well, hey, you're in Milton now, don't you want to be Milton? And they said, no, no, we, you know, we need the name and recognition of Alpharetta or whatever. And so, you know, I remember the Alpharetta mayor giving me a hard time. So I remind him now that, you know, when people move to this area, first thing they look in the real estate and all is Milton. And I said, you know, sometimes they'll say, or it's Alpharetta, but close to Milton. So exactly. I think things have changed a lot. So we exactly. appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you all so much. All right. Thank you. All right, Sudi, if you would please call next time.
Next item is a presentation of draft existing conditions and needs assessment report and draft final report for 2016 City of Milton Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Mr. Carter Lucas. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Now that we've worked our way through the budget process, we're going to begin the process of adoption of the update to the um, Milton CTP. Uh, tonight, Christina Pastor with Kimley Horn is here to uh, give you a an overview of the documentation that I'm about to hand out to you. Um, while she would certainly answer any questions that you have on it tonight, uh, the idea was that uh, we would just walk through the document so that you understand how the information is presented and give you an entire week to look at it before we come back to the work session next week uh, for a little bit more detailed discussion on that. Uh, and then we'll go from there on the adoption. Um, under our current process, we'd look for adoption of this update at the November 7th meeting. But if you feel that we need more time to answer any questions or, or look at any alternatives, we can certainly do that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Christina and Robert for um, an overview of the document, and I will bring up the document that they'll be discussing tonight. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, or evening, I guess, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to be here once again. I'm Christina Pastor, and Robert Binder is here with me tonight to present uh, the overview of the recommendations. So we're going to kind of step back a little bit to the beginning uh, just to give you a little bit of a reminder of what you've seen from us thus far this year and then we'll give you a little bit of a glimpse into the recommendations document. As uh, Carter mentioned, you have one entire week to read our very exciting document. So we're <laughs> I'm sure you're very excited for your late night reading. So just a little bit of an update to why we're doing this. Um, this current plan is an update to the 2009 CTP conducted for Milton, the very first CTP after you became a city. It's, it's been an opportunity for us to revisit the vision for transportation within the city. It's an opportunity for us to create a plan for both project and policy implementation. And at the end of the day, we're also going to be taking these recommendations and uh, providing them as a part of the North Fulton Comprehensive Transportation Plan that will eventually also then get considered at the regional level for the Atlanta Regional Commission. So lots of great opportunities. Um, in terms of our schedule, it was about a 14-month schedule. We had three major tasks. I'm going to very briefly go over some of our in existing conditions, our, our baseline inventory that we do. And using that information, we then determined what the transportation needs would be both in the, the five years upcoming as well as the future 25 years. Um, our plan was really focused around kind of the next 10. That's really the, the, the focus. So we're going to talk about that in the last phase, obviously, which has been the most intense as of late, is the recommendations phase. So I want to remind you of what a great job you're doing. At the very first presentation to City Council at the beginning of the plan, we provided a, an assessment of how, how you've been progressing since the last CTP. This slide is just a reminder of that diagnostic report and probably one of the best uh, snapshots of how much work has been done in the city since the last plan of the 30 intersection projects that were recommended as a part of the last CTP, all but one have been initiated. So just a reminder of how much you've done and also thinking to the future after the adoption of this CTP, the opportunities for implementation moving forward. So just a little bit of information, as I mentioned, on the existing condition and needs assessment. As a part of that process, we took a look at the people, the employment, all of the demographic information. We thought about the major areas of commercial development, commercial and office development, and also took a look at those market trends and where they're taking us. From a lot of our analysis and assessment, we developed needs. And so the needs were the basis for the recommendations that you'll see in just a little bit. So we focused on different modes. Our vehicular needs, you can see we focused um, on high intersection crashes and congestion. We also focused on the corridors we, where we anticipate that there's going to be some challenges relative to volume in the future. When it came to pedestrian needs, we focused on where are your major activity centers, the schools, the community facilities, the parks, looking at those areas of high demand and assessing them relative to the places where you have gaps today and trying to understand where the opportunities for highest priority pedestrian improvements might be. When it came to bicycle improvements, we conducted a bicycle suitability analysis looking at the roadway, looking at things like numbers of lanes, volume on the road, speeds, truck traffic, and comparing that to also including some of the roadway grades and thinking about how that compares. So this was really an on-road 
assessment, but we also looked at some of the opportunities for trails as well. And then finally, when it came to transit needs, we took a look at the areas where you have current service and compared that with the areas of your highest population density. Some of the areas where you've got a lot of redevelopment, like the Crab Apple area, that currently doesn't have access. And thinking about how you tie into the larger system. At the, towards the end of our needs assessment analysis, we can actually threw out, we conducted a large amount of outreach to the community. It's really important as a part of what we do to be able to reach the community. And so at that time, we went to two different football games to make sure we really could capture people where they are. And we know football is a, a big place to catch people in the fall. So we had two football games. Uh, we conducted one public meeting, three different focus groups where we met with um, the inclusionary really focused on a, a number of different groups, particularly those with disabilities. We also had a bicycle focus group and a pedestrian focus group. And then you will remember we also had an online survey that had outstanding um, representation. Uh, we had over, I believe, 1,300 people participate. That's nearly 4% of the population in Milton, which is unheard of in terms of percentage. So great representation. Um, and you can see the map that shows all the data points where people told us they had transportation needs and nearly 1,600 data points uh, that were added to that map. So all of this information helped us to understand where the needs are relative to transportation all throughout the city. And so that helped us to pave the way for our recommendations, which Robert is now going to give you an overview of. Okay. Hello. Um, so just... <laughs> so just like in the existing conditions and needs assessment, we also had a robust public outreach for our recommendations phase um, on a beautiful day in May. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, on a beautiful day in May, uh, we asked for input at Bell Memorial Park and the Milton Jubilee, hometown Jubilee. Uh, we asked for input on intersections, roadway corridor, bicycle and pedestrian projects. Uh, we carried that over into the public meeting later on in the month um, where we had the same exercises as well as we asked them for input on the funding for transportation and what they felt was important uh, in terms of, for example, safety or corridor projects. Uh, and all of those projects that we included uh, in the community events and the public meeting outreach, uh, we included in the MetroQuest Round 2 survey. So following the needs assessment, uh, we had over 300 possible projects. Uh, so we had to break that list down to a more manageable list and constrain it to the available funding that the city has. Uh, so the evaluation criteria, we broke up projects into four different categories, roadway corridor, roadway intersection, bicycle and pedestrian type projects. Uh, the evaluation criteria reflects the vision and goals set for this CTP as well as in the comprehensive plan. Um, so once we ran the projects through the evaluation criteria, uh, we did a project filter. So we pulled out certain projects, we did a detailed analysis for traffic on some of those projects, we looked at the MetroQuest survey results and the priorities from the public, we looked at public outreach from the community events and the public meetings, and we also got city input from the city staff. So once we went through that project filter and looked at costing, we were able to come up with a list of final recommendations. So because we're in the midst of a TSPLOS vote in the beginning of November, we needed to break up the final recommendations into two different sets of funding scenarios. So the first funding, funding scenario is based on the TSPLOS, if the TSPLOS passes. Um, through that level one, $37 million, that's made up of TSPLOS tiers one and two projects. Um, level two is $35 million, that's made up of what we ex or what the city expects to have available funding for transportation from the general fund, as well as TSPLOS tier three projects. Uh, level three, $42 million is based on an additional funding source in the second five years of the plan. Uh, that could come in the form of another, a renewal with SPLOS, a TSPLOS, or a bond referendum. And then level four is made up of priority projects that haven't had a certain funding source allocated to them. So the, we look at those as more aspirational projects, but we still consider them priority projects. For the no TSPLOS scenario, um, this is more based on what we expect to be available general fund 
dollars for transportation without the TSPA is passing. So level one, $17 million, that's for the first five years of available general fund money. Level two, $18 million, that's for the second five years of general fund dollars. Level three is $10 million, and that's more of a conservative approach for an additional funding source. So more likely a bond referendum as opposed to its TSPLOST. And then level four is $114 million, and that's basically all the projects that don't fit into those first three levels. Those, again, are aspirational type projects. So level one projects, I'm sure you all have heard plenty about the TSPLOST projects. Um, from tiers one and two, so I won't get into detail, but again, that's based on 100% revenue from the TSPLOST funding. Level two is made up, again, of the general fund plus tier three projects from the TSPLOST. The tier three projects, by the way, are the extra, is the extra 15% revenue on top of that 100%, so basically if the tax makes more money than is projected. Um, highlight of this level is the Bicycle Priority Network that Christina is actually going to get more into detail with. And then there's additional intersection projects. Level three projects uh, highlights Deerfield, or are the Deerfield and Bell Memorial Park Loop trails, as well as the Web, web Road extension across Georgia 400. And then, I think I skipped one too far. Yeah. Level four. <coughs> Level four, again, is the aspirational project, so basically the rest of the projects that didn't get included in level one through three. So once we had the list of final recommendations, city also asked us to develop a couple, or four concepts for different intersection projects. Uh, those intersections were Mayfield and the planned Northeast Crab Apple Connector, which is the largest concept on the screen right now. Uh, Thompson Road at Hopewell, Hopewell at Hamby and Cogburn at Hopewell Francis. Um, the Mayfield at Northeast Crab Apple Connector that's proposed as a roundabout enhanced or at Mayfield and Charlotte. Um, Thompson at Hopewell is a elongated roundabout. We call it an ellipse about. Uh, it would realign Thompson Road. Uh, Hopewell at Hamby is proposed roundabout, and then Cogburn at Hopewell Francis is proposed to have certain treatments to that roundabout to make it function better than it does today. Um, and again, with these concepts, these are simply concepts. Um, our traffic analyses, we also did, we looked at traffic signals at these intersections and additional geometric enhancements. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Christina. She's gonna talk about policy. So one other thing, just to um, follow up on the projects. There are additional projects that are included in the report uh, that are discussed as being GDOT projects. So there are other partnership projects like the State Route 9 widening where Milton is working with GDOT and in some cases funding a part of or, or maybe none at all. GDOT may be bearing the burden. So there is a list of projects that are also expected to advance no matter what funding scenario, TSPLOST or not, that are also included and those would be the GDOT projects. So just some other things to look at in your, in your document. So we're finishing up on policy recommendations. I've just basically listed the five major areas where we've got some recommendations. Uh, we're updating the functional classification map, the hierarchy for the road system that's been in the process of being updated with GDOT and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Also, there are recommendations on asset management, basically maintaining your roads and bridges and, and other elements. I'm going to skip active transportation, uh, transit recommendations, obviously opportunities for improving the existing system, but then also looking out to the future in anticipation of possible improvements to the 400 system um, all the way up to windward. And then also continuing along with some of the access management policies that were created in 2009. So I want to focus particularly for a moment on the active transportation elements because those are some of the ones that we think are most important from a policy perspective. So the first is the sidewalk priority areas. And what you can see in the highlighted blue areas, those are the half mile buffers around your major activities, uh, activity centers that include schools, parks, and community facilities. And so one of the, the newly uh, implemented si sidewalk policies for the city is that the city will work on installing uh, sidewalks within a half mile of those areas and then additional areas within the form-based codes for Deerfield and for Crabapple 
require six to eight foot sidewalks of so other development requirements on the part of the developer but the city installation will focus on these, those areas within the buffers <coughs> one of the other areas that we heard uh, was a very important area is, is how to best accommodate bicycle traffic uh, particularly the on-road bicycle traffic that there is a large cycling population within Milton there's been uh, some conflicts in terms of bicycles and vehicles and some of the safety implications and so um, the we've created a bicycle priority network that you can see on the screen and that's what Robert had indicated uh, as a part of the level two plan so there's a, a plan for moving forward with implementing this network and part of that is it's important to coordinate with resurfacing projects so the city staff has already been doing some shoulder widenings as a part of some of the different um, resurfacing projects over the past few years this is a recommendation to coordinate this moving forward so that if a, if a roadway is planned to be resurfaced and it's on the, pi the priority network, that it gets special attention relative to shoulder width to ensure that there's adequate width for those cycling communities. Also, in enhancing signage and striping along that network, it's really important. One of the things we heard from the cycling community was signage is really important and it's a really inexpensive way. They're not asking for anything anything huge, anything terribly expensive, but a lot of it is just communication and education. So the signage and striping is a, is a big piece of that. And then also initiating a robust public outreach process that includes targeting both the cyclist community and the motorists so that there's a mutual understanding of how to operate and the fact that there are priority corridors. Well, if you're driving on those corridors, that they are well signed and well known to be cycling corridors and that the, that accommodation and mutual respect uh, needs to be a priority. So uh, you'll want to read a little bit more about that. Um, it is detailed in, in more um, in the, the report. So in terms of next steps, to get us to adoption, the, the next steps are your review over the next week um, and providing comments if you have any to us in advance of the meeting on October 10th so that we can anticipate some of your questions. We'll be back for a conversation on October 10th and then assuming we continue forward, um, if you're willing, we would look to go for final adoption on November 7th, but we obviously will look to you for your feedback on that. And then in terms of moving forward after all of this, um, we want to be obviously advancing those recommendations for uh, consideration by the North Fulton CTP. And then also just moving forward from the policy and the project implementation, there's a five-year action plan at the end of the document that really kind of details steps relative to project and policy implementation that would be the focus for moving forward. So that's, those are basically the next steps. And just a shameless plug, we will be having the North Fulton CTP public meeting in Milton next Tuesday on October 11th. So I know you guys are tired of seeing us and having lots of public meetings, but we'll be back again. So to the degree that you can help us advertise, we have another survey, and since you all represented so well on the last survey, we would hope that um, your residents would, would come back out again and, and participate. We were just at Crab Apple Fest on Saturday and got to talk to a lot of folks. So um, hopefully on October 11th, we'll have a great showing here at City Hall for the North Fulton CTP public meeting in Milton. Okay. So with that. Hey, Christina, I wanted to thank you for being at the uh, at the Crab Apple Fest. So we Absolutely. appreciate you being there. Thank you for giving us your feedback. He was reluctant to give his feedback for fear that somebody might see him and <laughs> that might sway their opinions. But we told him no one was paying attention. Do you have any initial questions? No. Yes. I do. And maybe it's in your report here, but on that bicycle plan that you have in there, if everything goes well, according to T's Blast, um, and of course, everything's not fixed overnight, but how long do you think that plan, when implemented, could be completed? The um, bicycle priority network or the yeah. TSPLOS list? Well, the, the, the bicycle priority page that you have, I assume TSPLOS would be a part of that as well, is that? It would, it, it, and I'll let Carter, it might be better for you just to answer. Yeah, Carter. Well, there's certain elements of it that we could implement almost immediately. Signing and marking are obviously things that we could do under our current program. When we talk about those road sections that uh, would need some additional shoulder and uh, widening, those are kind of long-term uh, 
programs that we would look at under our pavement management plan and implement those um, as they come up. Some of those roads have already been done right. uh, in previous previous years, so um, I guess that's a long way of saying that some of those elements would be very quick and some will be a long ways out. One other note I just remembered, the hard copy that you have received also has a list at the end of it that shows which projects may change order um, if the T-SPLOST is not passed, so you can kind of get a feel for which projects might fall, fall off of the list. Um, so just, just so you know that that is there, we will be making electronic documents available, both of the existing condition needs report as well as this with the full appendix that has a lot of our data analysis uh, available to you also for your review, but we wanted to make sure you had a hard copy tonight. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks, Robert. That's one thing uh, I'm sure most of council concerns and uh, questions and comments get, I get them daily, is on traffic, so this uh, hopefully can help out. Okay, we don't have any items on our first presentation, so if we can move on to our public hearing, Sudi, if you will please call that item. This item is consideration of a resolution of the city of Milton, Georgia, extending until February 7, 2017, an existing, an existing moratorium barring the acceptance of applications for zonings and development permit approvals, including approval of final plats, pursuant to Chapter 64 or Chapter 50 of the Code of the City of Milton, Georgia, for property adjacent to an unpaved or gravel road to include those gravel roads with a paved extension. This is agenda item number 16222. Mr. Ken Gerard. Mr. Mayor, Member Council, thank you uh, very much. This evening we have a public hearing with respect to a moratorium extension of course, this council is familiar with sort of our protocol with respect to moratoriums. We have done uh, several of them of late. The notion being that we have the right under Georgia law to impose an immediate moratorium um, <coughs> for up to 30 days, and then of course to extend that moratorium, particularly to the extent it pertains to uh, matters involving zoning. We must have a public hearing to extend it further, and that is, of course, the protocol we have taken here. This pertains to both your subdivision regulations, which generally are not within the context of zoning, but also Section 64 of the Northern Code, which is. It pertains to two sections, both the subdivision regs, which speaks to the minimum lot size uh, with respect to frontage along unpaved roads, and it also speaks to uh, your zoning code, which also speaks to minimum lot size along frontages with paved or unpaved roads. The concern being, and I don't have to tell the council this, that there has been a much needed uh, or a much required need for clarity with respect to the interaction of those two sections to ensure that we know uh, from an interpretation standpoint which one controls uh, with respect to not only the interpretations of 50 as it relates to 64, but also if there is a, a, a lot with double frontage and sort of within the same time period that we came up with this need for some further clarity, we also wanted to ensure we had a better specificity as to what precisely is a paved road versus an unpaved road. And I don't have to explain to council the reason for that. So uh, back in September, uh, the council adopted an emergency moratorium barring for 30 days uh, the receipt of applications for zoning and development permits to include recordation of final plans related to any lots that had frontage on unpaved roads or paved roads uh, with a gravel uh, extension or a paved extension. And now you're here following a public hearing to possibly extend that moratorium until February. So Mr. Mayor, at this point, what would be appropriate would be for the public hearing to commence Take no final action at that time, but then when the, when the item comes up later on your business agenda, uh, to go ahead and adopt the resolution if that's the will of the council. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Do we have a, any public comment on this issue? We do not, sir. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Is there any questions for Ken right now, although this is coming back up? Okay. Uh, I just 
to if we can move on to our uh, alcohol beverage applications. Please call them out. First one is consideration of the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Willie's Mexicana Grill, located at 5304 Wingward Parkway, Suite A101, Hilton, Georgia, 2004. The applicant is Daniel Thaxton for consumption on premises, wine, and malt beverages. Agenda item number 16223, Ms. Stacy Inglis. Good evening, Mayor Council. The, um, the item before you is a new establishment in Milton. This is in the same area where Panera Bread is, and um, the applicant has met all the requirements of the city of Milton, and staff recommends approval. Okay. Um, do we have any public comment on this, city? We do not, sir. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Any questions for Stacy on this? Bill? What was previously in this uh, tenant space? I'm not sure. Thank you. Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Thank you. I was getting heckled from the crowd. Yeah, kind of adaptive <laughs> reuse. <laughs> okay. Um, if I don't have any questions, I have a motion for this item. Make a motion to approve agenda item 16223. Second. Okay. I have a motion from Councilmember Hewitt, second from Councilmember Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. So, and uh, we can move on to our final alcohol beverage license application public here. Sudi, if you'll call this one. This is consideration of the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Red Bawarki Indian Super Grand Buffet Restaurant and a Bar Hyderabad Doom Biryani LLC, doing business as Red Bawarki, located at 5310 Windward Parkway, Suite D. Milton, Georgia, 3004. Agenda item number 16, 224, Miss Stacy Inglis. Kudos to Sudi for being able to pronounce all of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is an existing establishment as, at Paradise Burani. Um, this is between Mambo Jambo and Noms Thai Cuisine. Um, this is a change of ownership, and um, again, the applicant has met all of the requirements for the alcohol license, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Staff recommends approval. Okay. Do we have any public comment on this? We do not, sir. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Is there any questions for Stacy on this? If not, I'll open up for a motion. <coughs> Make a motion to approve agenda item 16224. Second. Okay. I have a motion for approval. Council Member Hewitt with a second from uh, Council Member Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Okay. We don't have any items on our zone agenda or an unfinished business, so we'll move on to new new business. So if you would please call our new business items, taken into the fact that we removed item number one. This is consideration of a resolution authorizing the city of Milton's adoption of the 2016 Fulton County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan pursuant to the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000. This is agenda item number 16226, Mr. Matt Marietta. Good evening. The Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 requires local governments to participate in a hazard assessment of their area and then to try to mitigate those, disasters, those potential disasters as much as possible through infrastructure improvements and so on. Um, we first went through our uh, initial iteration of this in 2010 and uh, it's required to be refreshed every five years. Um, over the last several months, the city of Milton staff um, and public charrettes um, have uh, participated in the planning process through Atlanta Fulton County Emergency Management Agency and the other 15 or the other 14 municipalities in Fulton County um, to um, assess the, the state of the county and uh, come up with a comprehensive document. Um, what you have in your packet is only the 26-page Milton Annex, uh, the actual document, which I'll be happy to come back and go through line by line if you want, is uh, actually about 1,200 pages. Um, so uh, I figured you only would like to look at the shortened version, but if you'd like to review the entire thing, I do have it on the, uh, on the server uh, in the city of Milton. I'd be happy to look at it with you. But mostly what it does is it looks at the county as a whole, including um, the city of Atlanta and, and all the cities in South Fulton. And it goes through and assesses all of their, their um, various uh, hazards that they would face. Um, 
primarily it looks at natural hazards. So we're talking about things like dam failure, drought, earthquakes, um, which uh, believe it or not, we have one in 2014, a magnitude 4.1 in South Carolina, just over the border. Uh, it looks at floods, which if y'all remember, 2009 actually resulted in the Stafford Act uh, disaster declaration in Milton. Um, so we, we looked at that pretty significantly. Uh, it looks at geological hazards. It looks at heat issues. It also looks at tornadoes. And we did have an EF1 in um, June 2013 that hit North Fulton. And in October 2014, we had an EF1 also that hit the city of Melton and did $80,000 in damage. Um, and then uh, also it'll look at winter weather uh, as one of the areas that was assessed, which clearly we, we have icing problems uh, on a regular basis around here as well. Um, and then those, those different hazards that we face are, are rated based on the severity of the possible impact. Um, Annex 9 is the Milton specific one, as I've said, it, and it traces through uh, the, the census and through um, various input from staff, uh, the, the development patterns in the city and the hazards that we would face. And then uh, comes up with a list of um, primarily infrastructure related projects that, that we could focus on. Um, and uh, most of what we're looking at is stormwater assessment, uh, dam action plans, and bridges, uh, potential flooding issues that we've already looked at and we know is a problem and we're trying to assess. Uh, so we, we, uh, we've shared that with FEMA. Uh, the one reason for our participant, one of big reason other than just basic prudence to assess our hazards and, and try to mitigate them is that uh, Having an approved plan through FEMA, which is um, your approval of this, is uh, part and parcel of this step. Um, having this approved plan allows us to apply for mitigation funds through for grant funds through FEMA to uh, cover some of these items. Um, generally, these funds come in the wake of a Stafford Act declaration um, and are not readily available until there's a disaster. Uh, that's where the funding comes from. Um, but uh, in order to be able to apply for those funds when we have those opportunities, we have to have an approved plan. So um, Milton's participation and acceptance of this plan is, is critical to that step should we have a disaster in the next five years. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about this. Bill? <coughs> Matt, you mentioned the uh, uh, plan covering uh, dams yes. in the city here. Um, and those fall under the uh, purview of the state for inspection and all. Um, could you speak to that one particular issue? Uh, what do you know of, and probably Carter can help with that, um, what is the latest plan for uh, mitigation of some of the, uh, uh, the issues dealing with these dams as far as uh, not having been maintained, and um, do we stand uh, in good stead to uh, receive any state funding to help uh, maintain some of these dams that are in danger? No, so the intent of the mitigation plan is an action plan in the case of a failure of the dams, not to actually take over maintenance of the dams. Uh, so the maintenance of the dams would rest with the entity that currently has authority over the dam, whether it's the Soil Conservation Service, Fulton County, who, whoever it may be. Um, our mitigation plans are basically, in the case of a failure, what do we do, who do we contact, um, do we have enough equipment to han handle a, a, the breach zone, uh, those types of activities. So at this point, it's a result of the failure, not preventing the failure. All right. So maybe could you speak to uh, the uh, imminent issue? as far as maintaining some of these dams rather than talking about what happens after the fact. And this is, this is aside, I guess, from what uh, uh, Matt's presenting here and what's included in this, this plan. But I think it deserves some discussion, maybe not at, at this point in time or in this meeting, but I'd like to have an update on what we're doing with maintaining these dams within the city? Uh, in we currently don't have any dams that are the responsibility of the city. Right, right. Right. Is but we do, re we do recognize there are some uh, maintenance issues out there, and I guess the state's on notice. Um, 
they have been surveyed? Well, for the high hazard dams, um, they do their own inspection of those dams every couple of years, and uh, they notify the property owners. Um, in some cases, we're copied on those just because they result, uh, reside within the city limits, but sure. um, aren't necessarily the responsible entity for maintaining or repairing or inspecting those dams. So, um, yes, there are high hazard dams in the city, and yes, some of them do need work, um, but currently, none of them fall within the responsibility of authority or purview of the city of Milton. Do we have a map that shows where these dams are? We do. And are is everyone that's around it and it could be affected by them um, are they do they know that the, this could be an issue that's part of the development of the hazard mitigation plans and so part of what we do is we look at the breach zone downstream from the dams to identify those structures that might be at risk um, at that point um, we can certainly notify those property owners um, we're in the process of completing the first um, emergency action plan now We've uh, budgeted and programmed for, I believe, three more for this year. Um, of the Category 1 dams, there are eight within the city of Milton that we'll be working on over the next, um, well, divide three into eight, so less than three years to finish off all those mitigation plans and um, have an idea what structures are at risk. Um, and is that information that's available on our website, or is that just information that you have? Um, at this point, those plans haven't been completed. So as we complete them, that information can be made available. Uh, but at this point, we're still working on the first plan. And I think, it, you know, once once the plan is done, uh, I think it would be important to, to make it available. Obviously, you wouldn't want to make anything available until the plan is done and you're, you know, 100% sure. That, that's correct. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. If, if you all are interested in the dam specific portion you guys just love uh, saying it don't you <laughs> <laughs> what the fish say when he hit the block on the concrete wall <laughs> just talk to a dam engineer and <laughs> about the dam name <clears throat> it, it's actually in the hazard mitigation plan there's a dam specific section um that, dam that goes plan. through and it's got a county map and it, it lays them out so i i can be happy to show you guys how to access that or or um that section out and send it to you so you don't get the 1250 page document. Yeah, if you wouldn't yeah, mind, like you would mind, just have that sent to council. You guys, when you can. Is there any place online where where community members can access the dams and see the different uh, where these dams are and the different threat levels and things? Along? I know we don't have it. <coughs> Certainly, the, the, the state safe dams uh, maps all of their mm -hmm. category one and maybe category two dams also. We, we could do that. Okay. And I think the categories, obviously, one being the, the, the most damaged, where uh, I don't remember exactly, but life is, you know, there's a chance right. of life. So the Category 1 dam Losing would life. be a potential loss of life in case of the failure of the dam. Category 2 dam would be the same dam with no potential loss of life dams downstream. So um, as soon as you have any buildings or facilities built within the breach zone of a Category 2 dam, it can easily be upgraded to a Category 1. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll uh, open up for a motion. <clears throat> Mayor, I'll move to approve a resolution authorizing the City of Milton's adoption of the 2016 Fulton County multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan pursuant to the Disaster Mit Mitigation Act of 2000. Agenda item number 16-226. Second. We okay, have a motion from Council Member Law, second by Council Member Coots. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay. We can move on to our Final new business item. Sudi, if you'll please call sound the item. Consideration of a resolution of the City of Milton, Georgia, extending until February 7, 2017, an existing moratorium barring the acceptance of applications for zonings and development permit approvals, including approval of final plats pursuant to Chapter 64 or Chapter 50 of the Code of the City of Milton, Georgia, for property adjacent to an unpaved or gravel road to include those gravel roads with the paved extension. Agenda item number 16, 222, 
public hearing was held this evening. Mr. Ken Gerard. Mr. Mayor, same, oops, wow. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, same presentation uh, that we had made with respect to the public hearing. I do want to go over just very quickly, let you know when this moratorium would terminate. I think that is important. You always want to know that. On its face, on its terms, it would terminate on February 7th of 2017. It would also terminate upon approval by the City Council of an additional moratorium following a public hearing. Uh, it would terminate after any vote uh, by a majority of a quorum of the Council, terminating all or a portion of the moratorium, or, and what is anticipated, is it would terminate upon the adoption of an amendment of the Zoning Code and the Subdivision uh, Code pertaining to the division of land in the AG1 Zoning District having frontage along a gravel or unpaved road or subdivision of land in the AG1 Zoning District having frontage along a gravel road with a paved extension. That is, of course, the reason for the moratorium is to allow time for us to develop these codes to further clarify uh, our subdivision regs and our zoning code. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Do you have any comments or questions, Karen? Just real quick, when do we expect this to actually be before us? Because I, I believe it's already in progress, correct? It is. Um, Kathy, you want to come in? For you, Mr. Mayor, um, we did hold the, the CZIM um, at the end of September on that. That starts the process. Um, uh, subsequent to that, it will go on to the Planning Commission in October. And if it's not deferred in October, you will see it in November. So plenty of time to get something passed before the yes, February. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll open up for a motion. I make a motion to approve agenda item 16222. Second. We have a motion for approval from Councilmember Hewitt, second from Councilmember Longoria. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Passes unanimously. Move on to reports. Um, certainly, want to give a uh, shout out. Thanks to our, our staff and, and Courtney and everybody else um, that was involved this weekend for Crab Apple Fest. Um, huge turnout, great. Heard, you know, we've only heard great positive feedback. So uh, again, that's uh, one of the exciting things of, of our city is just uh, seeing folks just get out and enjoy it as a community. So. Great deal. So, council, any anything you guys want to report on? Yeah, football game. Well, no, not that time. But we left too early last time. We wanted to say congratulations, Chief, on the new truck and the um, the push in that we did. I'm sure you'll talk about it when you're up here. But we missed you last time. You walked out before we could say anything. So you didn't get on that new truck. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that and that ladder was pretty tall. I will say that that was pretty cool. Okay. What else? Two staff reports. Uh, good evening. Just wanted to cut, touch base on a couple of projects. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Birmingham Hopewell Road improvements, those are coming along. Um, installation of the Splitter Islands and Center Islands is going on this week. Those should be wrapped up by the end of the week. Uh, that'll leave us just with landscaping and some guardrail work to be done out there. Um, we've done an improvement on the landscape plan up there to try and uh, step it up a little bit on the center island, so we're looking at uh, the, those new landscape improvements up there too. Uh, Webb and Deerfield, we've completed that project. That was the turn lanes out here uh, right adjacent to City Hall. That's done. Um, sidewalk and trail construction, we're wrapping up the sidewalk extension that we did from St. Francis up in front of Hopewell. Uh, middle school and around to the city limit lines by road plan roads plantation uh, so that project is finishing up <clears throat> just a little bit of a lead time next summer we'll be closing Birmingham Road for a month or so as we replace the westernmost bridge between Hopewell Road and uh, Freemanville Road um, it's the smallest bridge with the handrail for guardrail one if, you, if you're familiar with that one try and get some real um, a real bridge in there um, so that will be coming up. Uh, we finished up our pavement management uh, for the year, and we are wrapping up our pavement evaluation that we had done. So we hope to be able to report on the results of that in the next month or so. Um, and that will really set the next five years, set our pavement program for the next five years once we get the results of that back in. 
Um, City Hall is moving forward. Everything is on schedule with that. Bob's doing a great job with keeping that on time and under budget. So uh, we'll be looking to finish that up in January and February of next year. And then a final shout out for TSPLOST. Uh, the TSPLOST referendum will be coming up in November 8th. Um, we had some uh, information given out at the Crabapple Fest this weekend. Had some good input and feedback on that. Uh, so we'll be continuing some educational efforts on that as we lead up to the referendum and um, look forward to the results of that. And that's all I have unless you had any questions for me. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. All right. Chief, our chief. I don't think we could have planned today worse. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, uh, my report tonight is tied directly to one of our initiatives in our strategic plan is enhancing the fire department community safety program. On Friday, the department um, went out to Summit Hill Elementary School with the fire safety house, the fire clowns, and Sparky the fire dog, and did a fire safety presentation to 150 school-aged children. So uh, great success there. On Saturday, we conducted a fire safety uh, program at Home Depot with over 300 participants from the community. They came out for that. Again, we didn't have the fire safety house there, but we did have the um, fire clowns and Sparky the fire dog. Uh, another great program and well attended. I think that was our best year at Home Depot with that with that group. So um, on September 13th, we held a Stop the Bleed training program, which was kind of a spin-off from what the police were doing with the active shooter training. This is a na nationwide program that's being offered how to teach people to react once an event has already occurred. How do you take care of the person next to you or somebody that you come across if you can go ahead and help them in any way? So um, we had 24 participants from the community that participated in that. Um, I think it was very successful. The feedback was great. So we plan on doing that again in the future here. So um, bike team was first deployed for the first time uh, at the Crab Apple Festival. Um, we ran two cardiac-related uh, incidents. Um, none of them turned out to be anything serious, but it's good to know that the team was there. Um, they were able to get through the crowd and respond quickly. So um, thank you for all the support on the bike team. That's been, a, um, I guess, for the first deployment, uh, a, a big success. And I'm, I'm sure PD has similar um, you know, um, ideas on how that program worked for them there as well. Um, and then the last thing, I'm sorry, the new ladder truck, is um, it, we put it out there at the Crab Apple Festival for the community to see it. We put the ladder up, um, and I think that was probably a big draw, better than our fire safety house or Sparky the fire dog at that point. But um, it, it was great um, to see the community out there. They asked a lot of questions about it, a lot of questions about the equipment. So I think it was great to have it out there for them to see something that their tax dollars are going towards. So if you don't have any other questions or any questions, I will retreat. Okay. So <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we can move into an executive session to discuss planned acquisition. If I can have a motion. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. So for the public, we'll step into the conference room and be back in just a few minutes.
David, are we on? Yes, sir. I do I have a motion to reconvene? So moved. Okay, I have a motion to re reconvene. Do I have a second? second? A motion a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous also.